Let's describe the transformation. This a value means we multiply all the y values by a. For example, if we say y equals the square root of x, this here is your standard square root graph. It goes through 0 comma 0 and 1 comma 1. However, if the a value was 2, it ends up being twice as tall. So instead of 1 comma 1, we'd have a point just above it with the same x value, but the y value would be doubled. And if the a value was negative, y equals negative 2 root x, instead of being twice as tall, it would go in the opposite direction. So the x value would be still 1, but the y value would be negative 2, because we're multiplying every single y value by negative 2. But given that a is positive, it has to be twice as tall. Now this square root graph begins at 0, 0. However, we shift b units to the left and c units up. So if, for example, we had y equals, we'll just make a2, x plus 3 plus 1, we have the b value of 3 and the c value of 1. Plus 3, a positive b value, means actually 3 units to the left. So we'll draw this graph. 3 left, 1, 2, 3. It's going to start here. And 1 unit up. So it starts here. Normally the graph goes 1 right, 1 up. But because the a value here is 2, we're going to go 1 right and 2 up. So this screwed graph curves upwards and towards the right and it's twice as tall. Negative 3 comma 1 is where it starts. Let's find the domain of this radical. We have the inside part being x minus 3. And in general, when we have y equals the square root of x, the inside part x must be greater than or equal to 0. So this here is our inside part. So the inside part must be greater than or equal to 0. We use algebra involving inequalities. We add 3 to both sides. We move the negative 3 over. It becomes a positive 3. So the domain is x is greater than or equal to 3. Let's find the domain of this radical. Recall that when we have the square root of a, a must be greater than or equal to 0. 3 minus 5x is our a value. So 3 minus 5x must be greater than or equal to 0. We throw the negative 5x over, and so we get a positive 5x is less than or equal to 3. We divide both sides by 5, and we get x is less than or equal to 3 fifth. This is equivalent to saying that x is less than or equal to 3 over 5. Let's find the domain of this function. There's two rules. The first rule is that the square root of the inside, 1 minus 2x, must be greater than or equal to 0. We throw this negative 2x over, we get positive 2x is less than or equal to 1, and we divide both sides by 2. Thus, x is less than or equal to 1 half. That's one rule. The other rule is that we can't divide by 0. So thus, x does not equal to 0. Let's find a domain of this function. First, the square root of the inside must be greater than or equal to 0. 3x is greater than or equal to 2. Dividing both sides by 3, we get x is greater than or equal to 2 thirds. Furthermore, the denominator can't be 0. x squared minus 9 does not equal to 0. We throw the 9 over, we get x squared does not equal to 9. And we take the square root of both sides. x does not equal to plus or minus 3. Remember, when finding the domain, you can't take the square root of a negative number. So thus, x is greater than or equal to 0. Furthermore, the denominator can't be 0. Let's factor. We have x 
plus 5, x minus 4. When we expand this out, indeed, it becomes the denominator. Thus, x does not equal to negative 5 or 4. Because when x is negative 5, negative 5 plus 5 becomes 0. 0 times anything is 0, and the same with 4. So x is greater than or equal to 0, and these additional constraints are true as well. Now, it's not absolutely necessary to write x does not equal to negative 5, because this constraint already encapsulates this fact. On a number line, when we say this is 0, and this here is 4, there's a hole here. When we say that x is greater than or equal to 0, we shade in towards the right, and we draw a solid arrow going this way. So writing x equals x does not equal to negative 5 is optional.